one of the most serious offences you could be tried for was heresy and religious crimes in Tudor England. These were so serious that many heretics were burned at the stake, and Mary I gained her nickname Bloody Mary for her burning of Protestants. To question religion or call for reform was dangerous, but during the reign of Elizabeth I, there were many Catholic plots aimed to kill the Queen and replace her with Mary Queen of Scots. Because of this, Catholics were persecuted by laws and were targeted to deter them from offending, and to worship overtly in Catholic ways was seen as heresy and law-breaking. Because of this, much of the worship went underground, and in particular one way of escaping execution for religious crimes was priest holes. These were hiding places which were built for many Catholics inside Catholic-owned homes across the land, and many of these saved people from execution. Join us today to look at priest holes, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Following Elizabeth I becoming Queen, there were many more harsh measures put in place in fear of rebellion and plotting by Catholics. Throughout Elizabeth's reign, she had to deal with a number of high-profile plots which planned to assassinate her as she was Protestant and then place Mary Queen of Scots, a Catholic monarch, on the throne. Eventually, the plots were discovered by her spymaster Francis Walsingham, but the problem with Catholic rebellion remained within England, and during her reign, thousands of Catholics would be arrested and some were executed and tortured for their beliefs. There were a number of men employed by the state to hunt Catholics and also Catholic priests, and these priest hunters would work inside of towns and cities, collecting information on Catholic worship underground, and would then be tasked with rounding these Catholics up on suspicion of heresy and plotting, and they would then be handed over to the authorities. There were many across the country who refused to accept Elizabeth's oath of supremacy, that she was the head of the church in England. These people who regularly also skipped church services were known as recusants and were actually technically guilty of high treason. It was also said that any Catholic who would be found trying to convert other people, such as Protestants, to the Catholic way of worship would result in their execution for high treason. There were strict actions taken against Catholics. For example, a priest in November 1591 was hanged in front of a door in Gray's Inn Field for having previously said mass there in underground worship. If someone had found themselves arrested for religious crimes, especially priests, they could find themselves tortured and eventually executed. The aim of this was to ensure that England had sole Protestant worship, and Elizabeth took many steps to do this, and many of these were brutal. But one way to hide Catholic worship and to conceal Catholic priests was by using small cells and priest holes, which were aimed to hide a priest away. Many of England's castles and country houses still have priest holes inside of them, and these were often made by high-profile Catholic families. Some priest holes were inside of apartments and secluded parts of a house, or were in roof spaces, and the purpose of these small hiding places was that if the authorities came to investigate the house, and the priest was there, they could be hidden away, and could escape arrest and capture. Also, priests would live at the time inside wealthy households, and would be at times part of the family. Many priest holes were also built into the staircases, attics and fireplaces, and were effective. Some even had tunnels that would lead a priest to escaping from the house altogether, should the authorities be there. Priest holes were also sometimes bigger, and were sometimes places where mass could be held, and it was considered to be a safe and private place. Inside of these, many Catholic vessels and sacred artefacts could also be held, and they would be stored to ensure that the family would not be implicated in Catholic worship. One man who devoted his time to creating priest holes was Nicholas Owen. He gave a large amount of his time making these hiding places to ensure that Catholic priests could be hidden away from the persecution. He was considered a very skilled man, and it was said that, with incomparable skill, Owen knew how to conduct priests to a place of safety along subterranean passages, to hide them between walls and bury them in an impenetrable recess, and to entangle them in labyrinths and thousand windings. But what was more difficult of accomplishment, he so disguised the entrances to these as to make them most unlike what they really were. 
Moreover, he kept these places so secret that he would never disclose to another the place of concealment of any Catholic. He alone was both the architect and their builder. No one knows how many he made. Some may still be undiscovered. Owen sometimes built these also as a hidden compartment from a chimney, and he also placed priest holes behind wooden panelling and inside of water closets. There is one house, Harvington Hall in Worcestershire, that has seven priest holes inside of the house, showing that there were many Catholic priests living there at some point. But Nicholas Owen, for his work, making the priest holes, was considered a very treasonous individual, and he was brought to the Tower of London, following the gunpowder plot. He was accused of being involved in the plan to blow up King James I and the Houses of Parliament, and because of this was tortured on the rack. But he was so brutalised by the infamous torture device that he actually died whilst he was being racked. He was later made a martyr in 1970 for his work in protecting Catholic priests. However, how effective were priest holes? While the parties that were responsible for catching Catholic priests were often very skilled themselves, they would make huge searches of houses and even at times brought skilled carpenters and stonemasons with them to try and figure out where the priest holes were. They also would tear down the wooden panelling and would pull up floorboards, searching for illegal signs of worship. Also, they would pretend to leave at times to see if then the priest would come out of hiding. But overall, priest holes were considered a very effective method of escaping persecution, and many times priests would manage to evade the authorities. There are accounts where priests remained inside the holes for a significant long period of time, when they would be starving and hungry, but also some priest holes were made with not the best safety considerations. Sometimes a priest could die from a lack of oxygen inside the hole if it was too secluded and was not provided with an adequate supply of air. But overall they are an interesting part of English history. Priest holes show us what a real threat there was to the lives of Catholics with regards to the Elizabethan rules on religion. The threat of arrest, capture and even execution was real and was something that people would go great lengths to escape. Today you can see many priest holes around different stately homes and houses in which someone would be sat inside of, praying that they would not be discovered. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.